Hello again, everybody. Mr. Monroe back with you again for another uh, virtual art lesson. And today what we're going to do is we're going to create a winter landscape drawing. So a landscape is a picture of things that we see outside. And in the winter time, depending on where you live, um, the landscape is going to look a little different uh, during the winter time. Okay? So what we'll need for this is you'll need some paper and you'll need something to draw with, okay? And um, if you have colors and things like that at home, then I encourage you to use those as well. Um, but I don't know what you have at home, so I'm just gonna kinda walk you through uh, the process of the initial drawing, and then any colors and details and things that you wanna add on your own, you are certainly free and welcome to do that, okay? All right, so we're gonna use some uh, sort of visual art tricks here while we're making this picture to make some things look closer to us and make some things look farther away from us. Um, now, in art class with me, you, you've probably talked a little bit about some of these concepts already, so you should be, uh, mo most of us might be a little bit um, familiar with this already, and this thing, these things won't be brand new to you. However, for some of us, uh, you might not have heard any of these things yet from me um, or elsewhere, so it'll be something new for you to kind of uh, learn some new terms and definitions and concepts and techniques, okay? All right, so the first thing we're going to do in our picture is we're going to have it in the landscape format, which is this way. This way is called the portrait format. Our picture is going to be in the landscape format. Now, just because we're drawing a landscape does not mean that every time you have to draw in the landscape format when you make a landscape picture. That's not, that's not a rule, all right? So you could draw a landscape in the portrait format. You could draw a portrait in the landscape format. Just It's just called that because landscapes are kind of better suited to fit on the paper in this format okay so in the landscape format what we're going to do first is we're going to establish a horizon line now the horizon line is a line that separates the ground from the sky so everything below it will be the ground everything above it will be the sky now our horizon line for this picture is not going to be straight it's going to have a little bit of a, a sort of a curve to it okay so I've got a little bit of a curve like that. So this is the ground, this is the sky, okay? Now, one of the tricks that we're gonna do to make things look like they're closer to us or farther from us is called size. Changing the size of an object. If you draw it bigger, it's gonna look closer. If you draw it smaller, it's gonna look farther away, all right? So, we're going to put some trees in our landscape because that's something pretty common to see outside. And we're going to show that trick kind of happening right away. Okay, so over here, down towards the bottom of the page, I'm going to draw a tree, an evergreen tree. Those are the kind of trees that don't have leaves to lose in the wintertime. They call them evergreen because they're always green. So different types of pines, firs, spruces, things like that. And now, the way I'm going to draw this as I'm going to start with a line that looks kind of like a capital letter A, right, capital letter A, but it's going to be way skinnier than a capital letter A. I'm going to put a line like this and like this, kind of like a skinny capital letter A. He's been uh, trying some new diet and he's lost way too much weight. So that's what he's looking like nowadays. Looks like he needs to eat a couple cheeseburgers. All right, so next... What we're gonna do is we're gonna add another capital letter A that's a little bit more like the regular capital letter A, right? So, a little healthier looking. So now it kind of looks, looks kind of like an arrow, okay? And we're gonna keep doing that as we go lower on, this is the trunk of the tree. We're gonna keep making those capital letter A looking lines, but they're gonna get a little bit wider a little bit wider, a little bit wider as they go down. Okay, so my next capital letter A is a little bit bigger than the one I just did, you see? And I'm gonna keep doing that as I go down. Those are gonna get bigger and bigger, little by little, as I go. All right. Okay. Now, those branches look a little bare. 
we're going to add some details to those branches by making, guess what, more capital letter A lines. Man, the capital letter A is the star of this show. Why not? It's the most famous alphabet letter in the world, or at least in the English language. So we're going to add more of those little lines, but this time, watch what I do. All right, on the line here, I'm going to add little capital letter A's like that. I'll do the same thing over here so you can see again. All right, little capital letter A, little capital letter A. See that? And I'm going to do the same thing on these branches, right? So lines that look kind of like capital letter A's, like that. We're just really filling out those branches. Now, if you want to make it look a little fuller, you can just add and do like that. And just do like that, little diagonals. All right, so those branches are going to look a little bit full of those pine needles. See that? Why don't you continue doing that on yours until you get all of those evergreen branches looking nice and full. See? Okay, filling up those branches, making that tree look full and healthy. Okay. All right, and then when you do that, we're looking at that tree trunk there. Now, when I look at a tree trunk in nature, I happen to notice that it does not look smooth. It looks bumpy and rough, right? So we're going to add texture to this to make it look bumpy and rough. And you can do that a couple of different ways. You can add some little controlled scribble lines in there that go this way, or you can do some zigzaggy lines, kind of like that. And I'm just going to keep going all the way up the trunk with those ziggy zaggy lines, kind of like that. All right. To make it look like that tree trunk has some texture that's bumpy and rough, okay? And you can even do that at the very bottom. All right. So now we have a little evergreen tree down at the bottom corner. Okay, now that trick I was talking about changing the size, and you can also change the placement. That means where it is on the paper. So this is low on the paper, and it's pretty decent size. I'm gonna go up the paper, up the paper this way, and I, right here on this little area, I'm gonna put another tree like this here. I'm gonna actually put a couple, but like this, but I'm gonna draw it a little bit smaller. So when I go up the paper, and change the placement where it is on the page. Things that are higher up are going to look farther away. Things that are lower down are going to look closer to you. If I change also the size, it's going to make it look like this guy is closer to the us than, than these guys. I'm going to draw two more of these little evergreen trees over here. So same thing with the capital letter A, skinny lines. Capital letter A. skinny lines and then those branches that get a little wider as they go down now again if yours doesn't look exactly like mine that's a hundred percent okay I don't want it to look just like mine I want it to look just like yours so if yours is a little different don't worry about it no sweat if you have colors at home and you want to do these branches with maybe like if you have a green color pencil or a green marker, you can certainly do that too. Or you can go back later and add the colors. That's fine. Either way works. Okay, so now this tree looks closer to our eyes than this one, or these ones, right? So we've done a little trick, a little illusion to kind of create that that the illusion of space happening in this picture, okay? Now, um, what we're gonna do now is make it look like there's some stuff that's even further away. So we have this little hill here, and we're gonna add another little hill kind of in the background, okay? So I'm gonna add another line back here 
to make it look like this this hill is even way farther back. Okay, so we got some different hills going on. All right. Now way back here in the distance, way back here on that horizon line, I'm going to add some trees that are even smaller yet just by making some lines and just kind of show the shape of the tree. Because when things are really far away, you can't really see the details as well. I'm just going to kind of sketch in the shape of these evergreen trees back in the distance. Maybe I can put a few more over here. If you want to even just make some triangles to make make it look like trees back there, that's fine too. All right, some trees way off on the horizon, off in the distance. All right. Okay. Now, what what I encourage you to do is think about some things that you might see outside in the winter time that we haven't included. Is there some different types of winter animals you might see flying or crawling or climbing around? Maybe. Uh, are there some activities that people might be doing out in the winter time? Maybe you could draw some people sledding or skiing. Maybe you could draw uh, some people building a snowman or snowwoman. Maybe you can draw a little cottage or house up here uh, where there's some people, you know, staying warm inside when it's cold and wintry out. Maybe you could even put down here. There's a little. Maybe there's like a little bit of ice. And there's like a little spot where people are enjoying some ice skating or ice fishing um, or just slipping and sliding around. All right, maybe, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you could put in this landscape at this point. Okay, and I'll leave that up to you to add some of your own wintry details. All right, so maybe you can draw like some footprints through the snow. Maybe somebody's been walking or, or, or traveling or exploring or just enjoying nature. Uh, also, certainly... There's something we could probably add at the top right now, some snowflakes. Now, if you have your own way that works, that's fine. I mean, you can certainly draw snowflakes by making little circles. That's fine. That's an easy way of doing it. You could also add snowflakes by, if you want to get a little fancier, you can just add like a letter X with a letter T in the middle of it. Okay, you could do that. And if you want to get super fancy, you can add like that, like what we just did. And then little lines on those X and T lines to make it look a little more detailed. That, that's not the greatest snowflake in the world. It's kind of hard drawn backwards, but you get the idea, right? So maybe you can add some snowflakes up there, uh, make it look a little more wintry, and you can change some of the size and things of the snowflakes so some of them look a little closer some are a little farther and kind of create your details and things to be in your uh sort of winter wonderland picture there okay all right so i want you to add some of your details to finish that up certainly you could add color and other you know elements of winter into your design and i would love to see what you come up with when you get all done all right so if you're able to take a picture of it and submit it to me i'd love to see what you uh what you came up with for your design, all right? Uh, good luck with your picture, and in the meantime, stay safe, keep the people around you safe, and take care of yourselves, okay? I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.